up, my friends, and welcome back once again to the Just Case and Brand. I'm your homegirl, I'm your tia, I'm your prima, I'm your cousin, I'm whatever you need me to be down here at the Just Case and Brand. Now, listen, I know that this video is gonna ruffle some feathers. This is not a video that is going to be all up Amanda's ass talking about how I understand her, all this. No, it's not gonna be nothing like that. This is gonna be the complete opposite because I feel the way that she handled herself on Club Shay Shay, while she did have some points and some truths, was a little rude and disrespectful. So the beginning is gonna start out with some clips from the video and then the end is me and my sister discussing it. Please make sure to drop your comment. And because this is my platform, if I see any comments that I just do not wanna see, you will be blocked and deleted. All right, let's get into it. So now we gotta shoot the car scene where we're driving in Malibu. Right. So we in the car and I'm telling them about what happened and I start crying because I'm a sensitive soul and because this felt like another instance where I was being like bullied. And Issa laughed in my mother face as I was crying and said, well, you know, you do have a tone. At the end of season one, I pulled Issa aside at the, after this. I, I, I said, can we go to dinner? I want to I want to take you to dinner. I took her to dinner. I said, you know, I said, I feel like you think I have something against you. And I just I don't know why you feel that way, because we had been cool from mm -hmm. even before this. Right. She was like, well, no, I said, I feel like you have something against me. And she said, well, I think you I feel like you have something against me. And I was like, based on what? Because again, Shannon, I'm on your show. Right. I can't do not like I'm. I, I don't, I'm only get scenes added if you add them. I'm in pocket, baby. I can't do nothing. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, why? She said, well, I. I guess I was looking at you like your character. Am I that good of an actress? She wrote the character, bro. What? <laughs> and so I, I say, you know what? So let's clean the slate, because that's just not. It, I have nothing against you. I, re I really don't. <laughs> and if that came off, I, that was not my. I have been told several times, I don't like you because you're light skinned. Like I get told, like, oh, you light skinned, you're not really black. But like, I'm light skinned because my great, great, great grandmother was raped. Right. by James Uhl in Virginia, or in Maryland, I should say, who then subsequently had children every month after that for 12 months with other slaves that he owned. And he put his name on their birth certificates. And this means that I'm also possibly related to Robert E. Lee. Um, I am light-skinned because my great-grandmother on my mother's side was raped by her boss when she was a maid in Grenada. So I just feel like we we oversimplify in a way that feeds this white supremacist ideology and instead of looking to each other to say, how do we starve it with love mm -hmm. and loving each other? So, you know, I am not colorist. There are many times where I have had to consciously remove myself from spaces because these people don't know what the f they're talking about. And they're like, well, you're black, you know, like this, this designer in Russia wanted me to be the face of her Africa campaign. I said, ma'am, the only way I can do that is if I am partnered in equal level with a dark skinned person from the continent. Right. And they were like, oh, you're just doing too much now. We don't even see race. Don't you just love that one? And it took me also a little bit to understand that colorism only works one way. Right. Uh, I don't know if bullying is the right word for what happens to light-skinned black folks who feel like they don't belong. Right. There is no way in the dissemination, the effective dissemination of white supremacy that we would not have dark-skinned women who don't like you because you light-skinned and light-skinned women who don't like you because you dark-skinned. They have been very effective at that division. What makes a black space a black space at this point? Mm -hmm. Because when I create black spaces, Shannon Sharp, mm -hmm. like Smart, Funny, and Black, right. like my podcast, Small Doses, my radio show, The Amanda Seal Show, we literally do black here at news. Mm -hmm. When I create black spaces, the, the, the word black in that context is always about community. You said it earlier. Right. So my problem, like you've already pointed out, is that I'm thinking, well, when they make a black space, it's also the same thing. But maybe... I mean, but baby, I got I got kicked I'm out of a black space. You know what I'm saying? I got I literally got kicked out of a black space by a black woman who sick black people on me, black men on me to remove me. So at this point, I understand that we can't just look at black people and say, is this skin folk or kin folk? 
we got to look at black spaces. Is this skin folk or kin folk? And all of these black media spaces that took her back in, all of these black media spaces that have just excoriated me for weeks, I look at them and say, you are simply black by name because you are white by commerce. Uh, they cut out at the end. He was asking, no, I have not been clinically diagnosed by a doctor because I'm not paying $10,000 to do that. And most people will tell you that at this age, you don't need a clinical diagnosis in the in that sense. And I think that's the other thing. It's like, we are so um, conditioned here in this nation to um, really only consider something in one kind of way. And uh, I will get back to that. <laughs> <laughs> so can I, let me ask you this. How old were you when you got diagnosed and did you always feel that you was different and you felt something was wrong? Well, what's today? Today is Thursday, the 18th. So 42 and however many days until, I, I was just recently diagnosed. Okay. And this came out of this situation because so many black women who are autistic said to me, I see you, you need to. And I've always thought that I've always thought you can look at other interviews. I have mentioned before, like, I think I'm on the spectrum because I'm an 80s baby. This was not really a part of the narrative. Right. And as we started seeing more about autism and you start seeing shows about different characters and I start learning more like from people like Holly Robinson, Pete. I'm like, this feels really like me. Um, but then, you know, I think sometimes we're afraid to learn certain things. Yeah. So. In 60s and 70s babies just got whipped and put to bed. And to be honest, <laughs> it's true. And to be honest, I just want to say like, so my mom, so in this revelation, my mother started looking up like symptoms of autistic children and was like, oh, sh <laughs> you exhibited all of this, but I didn't know what to do with this. Mm -hmm. She's a single parent. She's trying to figure it out. But I really just thank my mom because what my mom couldn't show up for me emotionally, I realized that she was able to at the very least, that's, that's not even fair to say, she was able to still let me be who I am instead of beating it out of me, right. which happens to so many mm -hmm. kids who are mm -hmm. misunderstood, you know, like, and she's West Indian, La Japal Grenada Massive. And so like, I'm over here being this precocious, you know, um, loquacious child that's mm. always talking to yeah. me, telling her like, why are you letting her just do all this talking and all of that? Why is she, she, she's too fresh, she's too fresh. Why are you doing all, why are you letting <laughs> her just run Shimoto? And my mom is like, that's Amanda. Like, let her live. Right. And most, let's be real, most parents. That would happen. No. Hollywood, especially black Hollywood, is kind of shunned. Her. And, uh, you know, everybody is kind of shaped through their childhood and their personal experience. Mm. So you see things, you see your life through your prison, right. different, your different lens. lens. Right, right, right. And so she's had some things happen in her life mm. that kind of makes her ultra defensive. She's a she's a highly intelligent woman, very right. intelligent, very re well read. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes you know she thinks everybody's out to get her, mm -hmm. and so until until she's comfortable with you, she's gonna keep that guard up. Mm -hmm. She's gonna keep the guard up because I asked her for a hug earlier. She's mm -hmm. like, nah, I don't hug. I asked, I said, give me some doubt. She ain't wanna give me no doubt. But once I told her, I said, Amanda, this is a safe space. You can tell your story. Right. She saw it back. She paused. She like, can I have a hug? And then she was cool. I think a lot of things that and people like, I was trying to invalidate her experience. No, I wasn't. It's the same thing I told Monique when Monique said, I try, you know, I was trying to get this role and Oprah told me to go blah, blah, blah for. Right. And she ended up getting the role. I mm. said, well, Monique, did you ever think that they were looking for a, a black heavyset woman and there were you two are probably the only two in Hollywood? And she said, oh, okay. That makes sense. Right. And so when she said the white lady had uh, her teacher, mm -hmm. I said, Amanda, did it ever cross your mind that I don't know where you from, but where I grew up, Ocho, Kids never corrected a, a parent. 
mm-hmm. or an adult corrected yes it, it, and that's what i said i said i said amanda did you think maybe because you were a child even though you were right the mere fact that a child corrected an adult now right. maybe in today's time that's fine mm-hmm. maybe we're in some place you grew up but i don't ever remember being around being in a situation a child couldn't even interrupt an adult conversation you right. couldn't pull on your parents or your grandparents leg and say hey 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 i'm like huh no so that's what i was saying i said maybe maybe amanda it wasn't racism maybe it was the fact that a child was correcting i could tell that she is very combative i'm gonna turn and face you a little okay she's very combative I'm not surprised that she ain't got no man. <laughs> I know that's going to be controversial, but who would want to sit up there and have such an argumentative partner like that? Yeah, I don't know. Left and right, left and right. And even when she was talking to Shannon now, yeah, Shannon might not be the sharpest knife in the bunch, <laughs> but I don't think he was being mean to her. I think that he was giving her normal adult <laughs> conversation. Facts, like, facts. So you got to be special education to have a talent. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah because it's where I come from. And then to find out you've been spoon fed because being a child star, that means that you were making some money. Yeah. Especially a child star on Disney. Yeah. When black people weren't even supposed to really be on there like that. Girl, you didn't have as hard of a life as you trying to make a scene. You didn't have such a hard life. So much struggle. Yeah. I mean, she came from the middle class. I mean, how many mm. black people came from the middle class 42 years ago? Girl, okay, <laughs> with a single parent, yeah, with a single a mother at that, yeah, was really holding it down. I mean, that's that kind of almost it takes out a lot of the struggles of some of our black counterparts, mm-hmm. some of our Mexican, some of our white counterparts that really lived in poverty mm-hmm. and really lived a hard life, and they still have a reason to like smile and look at life in a positive aspect and pick themselves up out of that situation. Yeah, you know, it's it's not like it's unique. It's just like about the resilience and the strength that you have to fight from the bottom Mm -hmm. of the socioeconomic ladder to at least the middle or even the top in some cases. So when you're starting like in the middle class already (laughs) at a young, young, young age. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you had a lot of opportunities to do things that Mm -hmm. most other black kids, Mexican kids, white kids they didn't have the chance to do Mm -hmm. either because they didn't have the parents that were supportive of them Mm -hmm. or they didn't have the resources to actually get to and from uh, auditions yeah. or a parent that was like, okay, I'm going to sacrifice going to work or what have you Mm -hmm. to get you to the audition so that Mm -hmm. you can do what it is that you desire to do. (laughs) What was weird to me was her having the nerve to act like, everybody in her school was against her. (laughs) The teacher said, sit down. You Sit down. <laughs> like, oh, oh my god, I can't believe she said this to me. And all her classmates were like, "It's okay." She calls us Negroes. <laughs> so she sat down and she was crying. And her friends were like, "It's okay, man." And she went home and she told her whatever um, ethnicity her mom is. And her mom was like, "Oh no, I'm gonna go up there and handle that teacher." Or were you getting out of hand and he was just talking, talking, talking? In fact, when it was supposed to be quiet time, and you, feel like you ain't got to respect authority. <laughs> when I see the comments on Instagram, people are like, yeah, that is a thing because some teachers do feel like that. <laughs> and these are going to be, y'all be letting these kids talk to y'all any type of way. Yeah. Letting these kids act like they have authority or they're smarter than you and all yes, this other type of shit. That, then be that. so surprised yeah. when they be like, I'm going to kill you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you let them think they have all of this power over you. Yeah. <laughs> if my daughter would have been talking like that and telling me, I told the teacher of this and she she tried to silence me and i said no i know my rights about what algebra <laughs> shut up shut up <laughs> damn you ain't nobody's boss you're you a kid lying. you are yeah. a kid you don't pay no bills that's for sure that was irritating that was crazy i mean and i still i agree with shannon like i mean not to nobody's experience personal experience should be invalidated Mm -hmm. right yeah but everybody should look at it from a different perspective especially if it caused you the trauma that you're expressing it caused yeah now what if you did look at it from a different angle and said huh you know what maybe it was because i maybe slightly embarrassed her or made her feel like i was being disrespectful and it wasn't about my race and it wasn't about anything that had to do with something that i have no control over Mm. my zero accountability control over yeah amanda ain't did nothing wrong since she was born (laughs) (laughs) since she was born she ain't did a thing you're dumb nothing yet everybody has attacked her 
Facts. Everybody has oppressed her. Facts. Everybody has oppressed her. And don't let her be black. Her. Oh, yeah. She is a black struggling yeah. from middle class, from middle class. Black yeah. struggling. She does also have a college degree. Uh, what if we found that out? That she was able to create. <laughs> but a black struggling <laughs> woman, all right, in this here U.S. of A. Shannon said, what made you choose hip hop culture as, you know, your study? So, the art of hip hop. <laughs> the study of the bibbity bop. <laughs> You know, because when I was in Jay Z's bedroom, he had on his wife beater. I had on his wife beater. We were writing his songs together. When Lupe was like kick, I was like nigga push, and we wrote the skateboard song together. That was me. She was a little extra. She was with every every famous rapper who is popular today. She was even with Tupac. I don't know if you knew that. They had a summer thing. From 96 to 96. That's how she was like, I don't know, you know Jay-Z. Yeah, yeah. And she was like, uh, yeah, I know who Jay-Z is. Okay. So remember Ho? Oh. Um, I was with him. I had a thing. Girl, okay. (laughs) That was funny, okay? But yeah, she was talking a lot like that. And it was kind of like, I don't know. Honestly, I felt sorry for her. But she was like uh, talking about the... um, how Shannon was invalidating her yeah. personal experience. But then she talked about that black dude who was all set. Remember, she was like, he was all tatted up. Uh, he was from Detroit. He um he ate edibles. And if that ain't nigga shit, she don't know what is nigga shit. Mm-hmm. But he was offended that she referred to him as a nigga. Mm-hmm. Yep, and she yep. made it like, okay, well, that was stupid that he felt some type of way because I called him a nigga because he is a nigga. Okay, but how do you know what experiences he's had, right? Because yeah. you're not invalidating people's experiences, exactly. you know? Exactly. So how do you know that maybe in his life his mama wasn't like, oh, you nigga, you nigga, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. it made him feel low. And then he yeah. went to school and maybe somebody said that to him at the school. Mm-hmm. And then he's in all these different spaces where whenever someone refers to him that way, he's getting some type of negative attention. Please, if he's all tatted up like Girl, this and okay. from Detroit and a black man who's doing... Uh, like marijuana said, in his past. yeah or cannabis you never know how people have treated him when they associated that because there are situations and circumstances of black people where we can be like hey you my nigga whatever like oh my my nigga let me tell you something yeah and it's a bit of a a camaraderie it's a bit of a mm-hmm. uh welcoming phrase to use to one another it's like love a bit but if you haven't experienced that or if your experiences with the word have been more negative then you're not going to like anybody to call you that no matter mm-hmm. what you look like. So how can you be upset because Shannon Sharp was invalidating your experiences? Yeah. But then you turn around and invalidate somebody else's. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like she can't see herself. Oh, no. You know? Because uh-uh. <laughs> to see yourself is to say, oh, man, I hurt your feelings. That's my bad. Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have said that to you. That's my bad. Okay. Yeah. She don't see none of that because she's like, no, I said the right thing the first time. Facts. facts. When I called Gerald Matthew... That was his name, Matthew, in that time, because that's what I called him, because that's what I <laughs> saw him as. Because okay. with my spiritual beliefs and the things about hip hop culture that I believe in, that's how she was explaining shit. I'm, I'm on a whole damn tangent saying a whole bunch of shit that didn't say nothing. Facts. Like, I, I've listened to Outkast. I've listened to my favorite rapper is Nas, always gonna be Nas. Girl, that's her man, so you better, <laughs> I better back up. Her. Yeah. And, I mean, even Lupe Fiasco, when he asked her, like, why why did you want to study hip hop whatever like it was this huge vague open answer Mm -hmm. that really didn't have any definitives but really hip hop when it originated back when it was um still being called hip hop and not in them days because now it's called rap yeah the hip hop element with that mixture of r&b a little bit infused Mm -hmm. in it that r&b element is taken out and they just talking about having sex and you know getting drunk (laughs) yeah (laughs) and buying big things and rolling I like to eat. Yes. Yes. I like to eat it. Now, back then in that era, it was more so about this is the struggle I came mm-hmm. from. These are the things that I had to persevere through as a child yeah. to get through and get to where I am at now. And yeah, maybe there was some rap- rapping and rhyming about like mansions and benzes and stuff like that. My hopes and dreams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, but if you came from really poverty nothing mm-hmm. to getting a rollie to buy being able to buy a mansion to being able to buy things cash not on loan from your business manager but it's yours you bought it cash yeah you should be talking about that in your mm-hmm. music because let's be real we're all humans and we want material things like homes cars yes. diamonds and things that are pretty to look at 
So to me, the hip hop culture is about, or hip hop is about coming from a super hard struggle that the people in your community can absolutely relate to. And it's, it's composed in a manner that's different from any other genre. Yeah. It's different from R&B. It's different from rock. It's different from country. It's its own thing and it has its own soul. But it was like she really couldn't Grasp articulate that. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like her thing was she wanted to be an actress and a singer. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> the bitch thought she was on brown sugar. Okay. The way that she was Honey. describing hip hop. Hip hop is like a rhythm. Oh it's like God. a beat. <laughs> Just like, shut up. Is that how she was describing it? Oh yeah. It's like a, oh it's like a feeling that you feel in the spring. <laughs> when you, when you, when you work. Uh, shut your ass and not late that want to be ass. The f- Tay Diggs is not sitting in front of you. This is Shannon. Girl, shut the f- that was getting on high nerves. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, she's trying to make everything sound so artistic. You know, because when you think of the obliquities of the opacities <laughs> of the blue hitties. <laughs> bitch, talk to you. The blue bad up. You would have sound smart and so bad. <laughs> she's talking like two dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Autism. Girl, hey, girl, no, no. That was something else. Like, and then when he asked her, the thing that What's bothersome to me is this whole attack against men, in particular, black men. Okay, we all on the internet all talking about, oh, I love my brothers, I love my brothers, love, love, love. Erica Banks, when she was saying, <laughs> I don't want no man complaining. Yeah. But- um, complaining is a man. Because why are you complaining you, as, a as a man? Why would you ever Why would you ever complain, complain. about anything? Yeah, why would you ever endorse <laughs> like, your opinion about anything yeah, in the world? You should right. let me be as the one. As a man, the world is perfect, and you have no right to say shit about me. Oh, so it's like, you know. Especially if you were Erica Banks, everything's just right. You ain't got nothing to complain you about. You can't say shit about a motherfucking thing. It has to make sense if you do complain. But like, Give just, me an example. Um... You can't, bro. You, 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 I, just I, don't. I, I believe not. <laughs> just, just don't. Okay. All right. Just don't. Just don't complain. You know, when I you just want to make sure you, to you shut the fuck up. I just be want to make sure <laughs> Life is better bro. when you with Eric and Blake. Yes, it okay. is. Nothing is going wrong. Nothing. You can't complain about shit. Nothing. What would you complain about? She said it don't like, sound wrong? right. Like, so... In other words, you don't want a nigga to open up to you about that. Like, if so, no, going express on, your feelings, but don't complain. See, there's a difference. So, what's the difference? Expressing your feelings is telling me how you feel. Complaining is like telling nagging. you, nagging. <laughs> <laughs> like, complain, just don't fucking complain. Because he's not. That was to- so weird. He's I was like, up. that is some. It's so, okay. No, no man can't complain about life at all. Yeah, that's ridiculous. And also can't feel no feelings. But when he can't takes that on to you and he don't feel no sympathy, no feelings for you because he cheating on you, then what? Yeah, exactly. Come but on, is he, is he some type of uh, heroic man? Because he's like, I cheated on you, but I don't <laughs> love no hoes over here. You don't see me complain. Yeah. There's yeah. This, uh, Michael J. White. He has this show and it's called Black Dynamite, the cartoon. And it's oh, a dang. huge, heavy satire on like the elements of black culture that are horrible, <laughs> you know? Good, like, I'm gonna see black people do that kind too. of thing. And that 100% reminds me of the men they're looking for. Somebody who's completely yeah. detached from emotional connection. Uh, but that was weird, bro. That was weird. I didn't like how she kind of downplayed his opinion. Yeah, um, oh, the yeah. The view that he had. And it almost was like she was attacking him. So he he brought up the question, okay, well, were you diagnosed with it? Mm-hmm. And she danced around the question. Mm-hmm. But she took it like it offended her to such a degree. Oh, yeah. And then because she shut down, diagnosis. that was so childish. It was so childish. How are you teaching anybody anything? I wanted a whooper. <laughs> with a belt. That Thanks. shit made me irritated. Because why are you sitting there at... <gasps> Okay, that's what you think, then that's what you At think. your big old age. 42? And, and it was festering, though. Like, first it was like a, a pout, and then it was like, a, well, I'm going to get angry because you're not validating yeah, my experience. Yeah, childish. Is it your a experience child. or is it not? Why does somebody else have to tell you? Mm-hmm. I mean, again, someone else can point out a different perspective that your little ass, because yeah. you were a kid in school, <laughs> <laughs> could not see. You know, <laughs> in retrospect, you know what I'm saying? But you're like so 100% against it that not only are you uh, pushing away from his question of mm. were you medically diagnosed with autism just to come out later and say you self-diagnosed. How the hell? Okay. And self-diagnosis is actually well-respected. No, it's not. <laughs> right? <laughs> what are you talking about? You just saying That's shit now. Crazy. You just saying shit to say shit. I'm not going to spend $10,000. How much did you get paid for Insecure? So you ain't even got $10,000. And you're telling me $10,000. It costs $10,000. 
I could go to KU Medical Center right now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to cost me about, if I got insurance, it might be about 175 because there was a time when I didn't have insurance. Okay. <laughs> and a little so check of exam is about 175 And if they want to refer you to a specialist, I'm damn sure they don't know $10,000. <laughs> you ain't got no type of insurance. <laughs> Facts. No, no Facts. insurance. Facts. Facts. I know the last nigga she was messing with, she spent a good hot 10 thou out. Often on this nigga, he looked like he had no type of job. He looked like he was an artist. I mean, and the that's the thing. Like you can't choose a man like that because obviously, if you was the breadwinner, eventually, I don't care what these women is talking about. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. If you're the primary breadwinner and you come up on a hard time, mm-hmm. and this able to help you financially. You're going to get irritated, especially if you want a provider. <laughs> yeah. Motherfucking teeth. A damn gin. Another morning, he ain't paid no motherfucking Look at him. Use the damn water. He ain't put $30 on that damn water. Oh, bill. he's just so happy. <laughs> <laughs> you come home and see a crawl floor. This nigga ain't done shit. He's like, hello, baby. <laughs> I need time to decompress. All right. <laughs> My whole girl told me that's how she was. She was like, I would tell him, I need an hour to have to myself. Don't say that to me when I get home. I was like, damn. She was the primary provider. Yeah. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. So this is all I'm saying. Like, and I don't condescend someone. Don't mm-hmm. don't belittle them. Don't don't talk in a manner that can be viewed as you feeling superior. Yeah. You're not higher than anyone. Yeah. And I understand where she's coming from when she's like, people think that I'm, I act like I'm better than them, da, 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 da. But you displayed it in that interview. And you though. purposely act that way. You purposely try and talk in a way that makes you appeal to be higher than others, yeah. smarter than others, more intelligent. The fact her whole, all of her stories didn't make no fucking sense. <laughs> then we would have started breaking down ages. She was like, I was eight. And I told my teacher, the French Revolution did not start in 1864. It started in 1905. And my teacher got mad at me and said, shut up. And <laughs> <laughs> people really sitting up here listening to this You're shit. So Even telling the story about when she was talking about Issa Rae. She said, she went to Issa Rae and said, your publicist got a problem with me. Issa Rae said, that's between you and her. Yeah. She said, oh. Why don't you take your ass to the publicist and say, you got a problem with me? Come yeah. on, tough girl. Come on, miss. I look everywhere. I had to snatch away and toughen up because, you know, I used to live in New York. So I toughened up and I snatched away from the girl. But you're scared to go up to the publicist and tell her, oh, why you got a problem with me since I came to your party? <laughs> <laughs> and why are you talking like that was the whole issue <laughs> that was that was a publicist party and she said I don't like you and Amanda said why and she said because I know it she was like I'm black <laughs> and the publicist was like okay yeah bitch I still don't like you <laughs> then Amanda cried oh my God. we're supposed to be making oh, safe okay. spaces for black people Thanks. I can be black and not like you <laughs> damn yeah, exactly. uh, exactly. I don't have to include you <laughs> Right, baby ass. That was That's so how funny. I know you were raised privileged. You got the, the competing trophy just because you participated. That's what kind of trophies you was getting. You don't yeah. know how to take normal rejection and be like, okay, this isn't a space for me. I'm not welcome here. Cool. My friend inside of there invited me. Imagine how stupid that looked. Yeah, I mean, that didn't make any sense because I get where you're coming from, but mm-hmm. I mean, for real, for real, like I'm not about to get repeatedly rejected. <laughs> You're not about to reject me after the first time. I'm gonna be like, oh, okay. I see how we're working. I don't. Anybody come and be like, no, I'm gonna get you into this party. No, you're not. I'm done with these people. Yeah, I don't want to be around these people, and mm-hmm. these people don't want to be around me. And I'm not about to put myself yeah. in a situation where I might have to fuck somebody up. <laughs> okay, okay. You ain't gotta tell me not to be here too many times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh uh. I'm gone, and I get. I think that a part of her wanted to be welcomed into that environment so bad mm-hmm. that she was like any anybody with uh, some type of pool that says i'm gonna get you in this party all right come on then i'm gonna I'm try to get in yeah and then you did get in but was it anything that you wanted it to be exactly i'll be damned i go to a woman's party it's her party her house or whatever it is and she's like i did not want you here I put your name on the do not allow list Facts. and you still got in here Facts. as soon as I found out that's where my name 
oh, geez. forget that. Why am I trying to force myself to be accepted by people who don't want to accept me? And exactly. if she has all of this love, she's like, I don't care though because I have I have people who love me. Even though it's people who say they don't like me, I have people who love me. If that's the case, why are you recounting so many negative experiences? I mean, just negative after negative after negative. Nobody there was nothing nice. like for me. Most of the shit I watch pretty much all of Shannon Sharp's uh podcast except Cam Newton because I think he's kind of dense. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I've watched the majority of them, if mm-hmm. not all of them. And I always pull something from it. Like, oh, okay, I learned something from that. I I gained some type of even some type of spiritual upliftment yeah. from some of his podcasts. But that one, I didn't gain nothing. Mm-hmm. I didn't gain no no knowledge. I didn't gain no spiritual elevation. Mm-hmm. I didn't gain anything except for a deep sympathy and sorrow for Amanda Seals. She needs to grow up. Yeah. At this big age, she needs to um, go ahead and talk to her dad about her life and let him check her. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you find out that her dad is some sort of politician with big money. From where she's from. You know what? That would be ridiculous. I bet I I I bet it's something like that. I wouldn't even want to know. Why are you why is your dad such a secret? Yeah, and then she said that like one of her uncles or something was a politician over in Guy or wherever the big fuck she's from. I'm like, you're surrounded by influence. Mm -hmm. What the hell are you talking about, girl? Yeah, so that's what I believe. She's trying to make a problem. She's oh, she's having a hard black experience over here. But in the Virgin Islands, where you're from, your family is royalty. You ain't got no problems. Your mama came over here to escape your daddy or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And now you got trouble here in America. And your mom's like, I can't believe we have to live in LA. Are you ready to go to your acting class? <laughs> Facts, so. Oh, what? Facts. Girl, you ain't had no real struggle. Why are you trying to make a problem? Everything's a problem. Every situation she went into was a problem. Except... For when she was on whatever whack ass show, it was something like The Voice, but like a little bit more low budget. Oh yeah, the majority Jeff of white folks. Worthy of them. Yeah, and she was like, "They treated me so okay. Yeah, they loved me. They understood my blackness and my black experience because <laughs> I'm black, and they yes. knew I was black. But every experience she had with black people, for real, for real, it was negative. horrible. Negative, negative, negative. Even with Shannon Sharp, he's negative. That's so true, he's though. Negative. Isn't that the truth? And then it just begs the question. Okay. And then she she also mentioned in an interview that she's like spiritually in tune, that she's emotionally aware of everything that's going on around her, which <laughs> like kind of time tarot card reader, less a medium. Know. Obviously, you can't understand anything emotionally going on <laughs> no. around you because people don't like you. You don't know it. <laughs> like, Why don't you like me? Facts. <laughs> you don't like me just because you don't like me. Okay, but where's all this emotional intelligence you could feel i mean shit i could feel it and i could tell if somebody don't like me and i could tell why yeah you know okay, what I'm okay let me back up a little bit. Be like all right you cool whatever like right. i'm not gonna you know keep on but uh for somebody who's so spiritually in tune she seems really lost in the world yeah <laughs> when shannon was like oh why do you care about people who don't like you and she was like i wish i could get like that bitch what <laughs> you, you wish no you could stop caring about people who don't care about you yeah. You wish you could stop caring about their opinion? I'll be damned. If someone was like, Jessica, I hate you and I hope everything you <laughs> fail. Okay. I ain't gonna be like, uh, why? Why? Facts. why you hate me? And why you hate everything I do? Everything I do is kind of funny, right? I know. Well, why right? would I be doing that? That constant seeking of validation and you know what I'm gonna say? Yeah. <laughs> that social media propaganda, propaganda. Yeah. has <laughs> seeped into the minds and the brains of Oh yeah, because that girl on her phone like, oh, so they don't believe I have autism, which I do because I know what was said <laughs> yes. about me. I mean, sure, she knew the second, the the, the morning after the podcast. Was Honestly, not, not not already. Already. I just not thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a vampire. Why? Because I looked it up on WebMD. Why do you think you're? <laughs> <laughs> All my symptoms point to me being. A vampire. What are the symptoms? Uh, I can't go out in the day. Because <laughs> I'll be asleep. At night, <laughs> I got to drink tequila. <laughs> you right. I be having to fight off the warlocks. And you do be eating meat. Yeah. I eat, I eat and you bloody love. before you cook it. Okay, I'll see. No, no, no. I don't like that now. I like my steak a little medium. But it be medium well. <laughs> And then I was looking at my teeth, and you know how I got that wisdom tooth pulled. And them sharp ones. Yep. Okay, I'll see. Let me talk about my dental. 
the way they pulled the wisdom teeth, they were like, oh, now when we pull these ones down, your fangs might pop out a little bit more at night. And I was like, you know, the soda. <laughs> I went to LA. I can't even remember. It was a blackout. I don't know what I did. <laughs> you are stupid. I was biting niggas left and right. <laughs> You got issues. <laughs> so, yeah, girl, I understand her. You got, no, you don't. Oh, yeah. No, you don't. The medicine that I be taking be edibles. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You are stupid. Oh, and all. Nah. <laughs> What this interview said to me is she wasn't the fun girl to have as a friend in your teens. No, she was the one who constantly need. Okay, so my opinion, because if we're going to be talking about spirituality and all this stuff, if anybody is going to... She believes about folk gods. Yeah, I'm going to go in it, okay? Yeah. Because you have a god tattooed that's supposed to be the god of justice. So then what about the other gods? Like, don't you got a god for like love and goodness and kindness? Yeah. I mean, if you're going to be served one god of justice... You still got to serve like 50 other gods mm -hmm. for to regulate all of your other emotions. Mm -hmm. Now, there is the one true God. All right. Right. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> the most oh, high right. God, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. One God eternally existed in three persons. You write about it. Now, that God has everything that you need in one God. Yeah. He got your emotional regulation. He got your ability to not be easily offended. He's got your ability to fill you up with so much love that your cup runneth over. You don't mm -hmm. need the love from people who don't even deal with you like that. Instead, you give that, it. Yeah. Instead of needing it, you're able to give it because you have so much overflowing within you. Now, what I've seen from her is that she is lacking inner life. Girl, <laughs> like a mug. It's so dim. Yeah. So sad. She brought us a sad spirit. Though. She's the yeah. type of person you get together with. Y'all go to a nice place, dress up all cute and stuff. And like, you're like, oh, girl, this is so fun. And she's like, yeah. So, you know, my mom had said that she hated what I'm doing with my work now. Facts. And you're like, Ugh. yeah. And, and it goes downhill. And then I work the director. You know what the hell this damn white fucking director said to yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. And what's so what? weird, too? She talks about everybody attacking her in these black spaces, yet she's one of the most successful black freelance podcasters to me. She has her own website, games, the YouTube channel she has. Everything is, like, successful. The only thing is she's not mainstream media Hollywood. Yeah. Well, she said that in, like, in that interview that a lot of black publications like Essence and uh, some other black publication, they all turned their back on her after speaking about some type of situation. Uh, and she feels like what she said was the truth. Okay, so then if you're speaking the truth and these black outlets <clears throat> are going against you, then whose side are you on? Mm. Because uh, in the famous words of Bob Marley, I always love this quote. He said in an interview, they asked him a question and he said, I'm not on the white man's side or the black man's side. I'm on God's side. So that kind of puts it in a space where it doesn't matter about the color of your skin yeah. because a black person can be just as rough to you, just as mm -hmm. unloving, just as hateful as a white person can be to you. So when you're talking about where your love lies, where your where your worship is, what you're investing your all your being into, if it's in the black race, I'm not trying to say nothing bad about it, but. You're going to be disappointed every time because mm -hmm. we're talking mm -hmm. about I, I, the thing that bothers me the most, too, about these pro-black people is that they talk all this pro-black stuff. But where is it when a black person kills another black person, when a teenager kills a single mother, mm -hmm. uh, a black teenager kills a single mother because they on some gang gang shit? Where is the outrage? Yeah. Where is the ah? Where is the black lives matter only matter when a white cop kills a black person or when mm -hmm. a white person kills a, a person of color. I mean, that don't make no sense to me. So when we're talking about I'm for the black people, I'm for the black race, I'm, I'm black race first and anything else has come second to that. Okay. So black people are your God. All these black people in the world, you're serving as your God. She's so focused on what everybody else is doing wrong yeah. around her, what society is doing wrong. Yeah. She done lost her whole stance on like Black Lives Matter, black people this. She done lost her whole stance on that because now it's like, oh, everyone in the world hates me now. Okay. You didn't think that this was going to come with some sort of ridicule. Yeah. Being on a platform, having a whole bunch of eyes on you, having a lot of attention. You didn't think this was going to come with none of that. Yeah. And is it not embarrassing that everybody you're talking about all these negative interactions. Ain't nobody said nothing. 
Everybody just letting you sit there and talk out your ass like you a crazy person. I know, and that's gotta hurt. That's embarrassing as hell. Yeah. Sit up here and really talk. I feel like she she dogged Issa. The way that she was talking. I feel, I feel like she was really coming at her neck, though. I, I, mm-hmm. I do feel like she was coming at her neck. Mm-hmm. But she said, I wouldn't even want a $100 million deal. And then she was like, I mean, I respect her for the space that what she's doing, but I, I'm not trying to... That was the same yeah. conversation. Wasn't yeah. it? That was that was wild. I was like, what are you really trying to say? I did here? not like none of that. Oh, um, I put my show on her website, and she couldn't even tell people it wasn't her show. She didn't tell them that, all because it was on her website. Do you know how hard it is to build a website and get traffic to it? Let alone to a show that don't nobody know on a web. This ain't YouTube. And you got the nerve to complain that you're on someone else's website putting your show on there. <laughs> and she's like, make sure um, at the right when you get to your website that you put Amanda Seals new show. Yeah. Click I'm here. Like, it, that's, it, she wasn't even supportive. She didn't even support me. She didn't support me. Girl. Ugh. And that sounds mad crazy to me because... In one sentence, you're talking about how y'all had to sit down and y'all mm-hmm. wasn't vibing, and that was that. Oh, and, and you know, she was talking about that tough girl shit too. Cause yeah. I told her, you know, I say it. Oh, okay, girl. Yeah. And then she said that she said, okay, I thought you were the character on the show. Well, you do kind of, I, I ain't going, I'm not trying to say this to hurt this girl's feelings, but you're worse than the girl on the show. <laughs> The fact that she thought in her head that Issa was like, oh, yeah, I fucking hate Amanda Seals. I'm going to write a show character about her. I think it was just y'all fit each other. The yeah. character fits you. You fit the character. For sure. That was that. It wasn't no disrespect on Issa's side trying to make you seem like a dumbass life. <laughs> you know, and that's how I feel like that's how she was trying to paint it. Like Issa thought that about her. And I don't think that was the case. Yeah, it was kind of weird on that little on that little front. Mm-hmm. It, it A lot of her her victim stories. Actually, all of them had to do with race. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah they hate her because she's black. Yeah, whether they're Everybody. white or whether they're black. Yeah. <laughs> I think about if it. they treat her good, it's because she's the only black person. If they treat her <laughs> bad, it's because she's the only black person. If they treat her bad, it's because black people don't like her as a black person in their space. Facts. That's it's, so true. She, she ain't never in the wrong. She... I, I'm real curious to hear how she carries herself around these people who are like, I do not want to fuck with her. Yeah, me too. Real curious. Me too. And then the whole thing about like, you asked, you sat down with your college people and asked them why they didn't like you. And they all said, cause you think this, cause you think that, cause whatever, whatever. And then this lady that you're trying to get into her party offers you the opportunity to tell you why she don't like you and you don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. That's kind of weird, no? I think that she was lying. I think that she probably did tell her, like, I don't like you. And here's why. And she was like, I don't want to hear it. I don't have to hear it because I'm not your friend anyway. So you ain't got to tell me. It was probably something very reflective of that. So where she didn't even give the woman an opportunity oh, to say to why she didn't her. like her. Oh, okay. Because she's so full saying. of her feelings like a big ass kid. She I'm is like, like a big kid. Here. Come on, Jesse, I'm leaving. If no one's leaving, no, I want to hear it. And the girl's like, no, I'm going to tell you. You want to know? <laughs> you want to know? I'm <laughs> sure. you. You want to know? Because this is, I mean, I don't know. It's something weird about it. Like, as many people as Issa has worked with, I mean, this person had to still be working on her team throughout all of these experiences. Mm -hmm. So why is it just you? You the only one. And countless people have gone on Shannon Sharp and said that they've had uh, positive encounters in uh, being on Insecure, like the black spaces, and that women are really, like, treated well and, like, you know, almost protected on set. Yeah. So all of them. Even other interviews. People speak yeah. positively of their experiences with Issa. Oh, dang, for real too? Yeah. So basically, it's just Amanda because she's light skin black. <laughs> <laughs> she can't pull the old colorist card on Issa because Issa is dark skin black. So all I can think of is, oh, you're light skin black. True. That's why Issa don't like you. Issa got real African lineage in her blood. Yeah. Amanda <laughs> want to be black so bad. That's why I'm so curious. Where's your father? What was your yeah. real childhood like? Were you around him? Um, and if you were around him, were you like a Jennifer Lopez? You know, running through the block. <laughs> you know, where you, you are bad. Dumb. You know what I'm trying you to are say? So dumb. You had a very sheltered <laughs> lifestyle, but you're trying to act like you just had power. Yeah. You just had so chill. And yeah. you didn't. No. I mean, her <laughs> stories were even super weak. Oh, like, hell there was yeah. no physical abuse. Mm-hmm. There was no super deep poverty. There was no, no none me of that. and my five and ten brothers and sisters all had to sleep in one room. No. Pish you aside, baby. Oh my she gosh. can't see her brothers and sisters. Now, I don't know this to be true, but that's the behavior she's getting. You're stupid. Corey Holcomb, you talking about that. That's how she acts. She ain't got no <laughs> siblings. 
She's the only child. Her mama ain't never had no man. It's just been her and her mama against the world this whole time. It does kind of sound like um, her mama ain't really been with nobody for real. For real like no, because it's been her and her mama against the world. This, that's a dangerous. If I was a man, I wouldn't want to date her. I mean, I wonder, and I really do wonder, like, what is the statistics of a girl who grows up without a loving father figure in her life? Especially I mean, if her mama don't basis. like men. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if she got that uh, bear versus man mentality. Oh my. So she hates God. men. Oh, every man is bad because your father did me bad. Now every man is bad. Every And you know what? You're never going to find a good man because good men don't exist out here. Okay, mom. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Well, just take away all of my hopes and dreams of finding anybody. And now look at her. She's single. She said yeah. she froze her eggs, but she don't want kids. So what the fuck you freeze your eggs for? She said because people made her pretty much. It was like a peer pressure. Uh, what I she think, is so weak. I think she what it was as hell, really. Bro. I think because I don't think that anybody can make you do something you really don't want to do or you're not really contemplating. And I think when she froze her eggs, she said, maybe I will want to have kids mm -hmm. if I find the right man and we get married. Maybe I do want a family, mm -hmm. but she just ain't found the right man and she ain't got married. So yeah. she's like now she's like totally against it. I don't oh, want kids. Okay. No, 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 no. You know, sometimes people will say they don't want something so that it makes them not want it. Yeah. But she's trying to convince herself that she don't yeah. want kids no more and shit, but still got her eggs frozen. Yeah. The girl, the Why lead. don't you give them to somebody then? That yeah, means eggs. if that's the case. <laughs> That'll make I sense. like my life the way it is. I'm like just going to keep oh, your frozen eggs forever. And do what? Make <laughs> scrambled egg patties? I'm saying, like, what kind of children sell them? <laughs> give them to somebody who can't produce eggs. Yeah. yeah. I help them have, like, mm -hmm. some kind of baby. Little, what is the test tube baby? <laughs> all right, like I'm sorry to kids. all the test tube babies. I'm sorry to all the test tube babies. I didn't mean oh. that to hurt your feelings. Amanda Sills is going to make a response to this video and be like, you know, it's crazy how women, black women in our demographic come against other black women in their special needs with having a child <laughs> no and fertility. Needs. You know, she loves to say some shit. That, yeah, I feel like true. that is her... Think she knows how to use big words and spin her sentences to make them sound very intelligent. And if you're not above an eighth grade reading level, you gonna think this bitch is really spitting some fire. That's true. And you know what? I really don't like um what is it? I think the Bible say in the multitude of words is folly. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's true. Mm -hmm. Uh because when people love words and they just love to pretty much hear themselves talk and hear themselves use the words, mm -hmm. it's like you're really losing the whole meaning yeah. of your of whatever point you're trying to make your message yeah. you've lost it because you're really not mm -hmm. saying nothing you're mm -hmm. saying a bunch of nothing <laughs> that's what i said i said she talks so beautifully and everything she say is like goddamn life <laughs> what are you you are fabricating every single experience to me that she went through is fabricated there ain't no way you don't went through all this shit then she fabricates her stories and then follows it up with the witness who says i always thought you was lying but now <laughs> I know you ain't lying. I think no that more. that's so weird that her closest friend said that I thought you was always lying until that experience. How long have y'all been friends? <laughs> how long y'all been friends? And how long your ass been lying? For her sake? <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you be lying. <laughs> you be lying. This one. <laughs> <laughs> You were like, no, this one. I was there. <laughs> you were done. So she takes that one little story and she fabricates it. Yeah, my friend told me every time she thought I was a liar. <laughs> and not angry. No, bitch. And she caught you in that one lie. You told the truth. Then you did you that. Ah, okay, you got me. She was like, okay, girl. Because I thought she was lying, but you said that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that happens. <laughs> she be just lying. So stupid. <laughs> no, she that, she be stretching the so much sense though, girl. Remember uh, making that? that pizza? And uh -huh. We were like rolling out that dough. Uh -huh. That's how she be taking one little chip. <laughs> she rolled that mug into a big old eighteen inch pizza, large, baby. <laughs> wow, just working it, just working yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so therefore, she knew. She validated me. Validated my experience. Yeah. And that's what she wants. She wants people to validate her. Girl, they your experiences. Man. <laughs> they are yours. Now, what you do need to do is you need to let them go. Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, yeah. okay. I, and the, the other thing is, it's like, people might be like, oh, well, I mean, nobody said this when Kat went on there. Nobody said this when Monique went on there. Nobody said this when Country Wayne went on there. Da, 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 da. But the thing is, is that 
in their opinion, their interactions with certain people prevented them from being successful. Mm-hmm. It, it, it stopped them or it caused them a great delay before mm-hmm. they were able to get back running. What's your delay, girl? <laughs> being black. Nobody even knew he was like a problem. The whole insecure. Everybody loved your ass. Everybody loved. The I whole thought show. everybody did too. I thought she was like a yeah. main hit for everybody watching because she was like the Beyonce of the cast. I yeah, thought. she was. And there were little rumors and stuff, but she was on season after season after mm-hmm. season after mm-hmm. season. So I mean, if Issa really wasn't dealing with you like that. Why didn't she just have you? How ironic. You know what I'm saying? Now after five seasons, you don't fuck with Issa. Yeah. After I done put money in your pockets for five seasons. No, after she didn't get invited to that party. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, Issa, I want you to go and slap your PR button. <laughs> and if you don't, you're not protecting me. Issa was like, girl, no. <laughs> She's like, I'm grown. I got a husband and shit. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to write scripts and shit. I got a lot of I forgot that she does have a whole husband and stuff. <laughs> And Amanda, she did have that relationship with her ex that she said spun the block and she was so like braggadocious about that. Ah, uh-huh, he know what he got. He know where to come back to. Da-da. And now we're at. Not with your ass. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure it's not because you can't be a nice woman and stuff. You don't want to be. No. You don't She's self-righteous. Be. She's yeah. got to be right. She's got to make the point. Mm-hmm. It's got to be her final whatever word. Mm-hmm. And that's what it got to be. And it's crazy to me. That oh, yeah. all of these interactions that she's had with people, she still refuses to see it. Yeah. She's like, I don't it ain't need her. To change. It ain't her. Yeah. That's crazy to me. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the way that you are interacting with people is a problem. If it's mm-hmm. person after relationship after relationship, whether it's romantic or just on some friendship shit. Yeah. And you can't find some common ground. Mm-hmm. I think that you should look at the mirror. Yeah. And obviously, and this, this is the other thing. Don't go to therapy if you're not willing to make the changes necessary to be a better person for your own damn mm-hmm. self. Everybody act like uh, the key to self change is going to therapy. I'm in therapy, so basically, I'm elevating and changing. You can go in there, you can pour your heart out, you can do all that type of shit. What are your actionables? Exactly. What are the character traits you're actually being like, ooh, that's not good, let me change yeah. that? Oh, I don't want to feel that trauma, let me change that. Y'all ain't doing none of that shit. Yeah. All you're doing is saying you're going to therapy, and that's what I feel like with her. Because if you had a real therapist, they would be like, okay, and then what was your side of it? Like, let me start to break down what's going on but in your remember, brain she said that in the interview she said that her psychiatrist was like you don't always need to say everything even oh. if you're <laughs> right or even yeah, if you're yeah, telling yeah. the truth or something that was your therapist's way of saying you're the problem. Yeah. And practice <laughs> self-control. What's wrong with self-control? Yeah. What's wrong with emotional control? Yes. What's wrong with it? Say it girl. Oh you feel like you just should be able to lash out go where you want do what you want because you're black. Say what you want and you're 42. You're grown. Girl. But I'm sorry to say it a lot of people, a lot of women are trying to run away from the fact that they're getting older yeah. without the maturity that reaches it. I feel like mm-hmm. I'm 27. I feel like I'm uh, 25 and, and you're 55. It's so popular on that uh, dating show, that Kendra G show I watch. She'll be like, mm-hmm. okay, what's your name? They'll say it. She'll be like, what's your age? They'll be like, oh. she'll be like, I have to know your age. It should be like 40. You're 40. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want nobody to know. Why? Yeah. You're 40. I mean, that's just the reality of it. You're 40 years old. Is yeah. there something unaccomplished that you didn't do? Uh, is there something that you feel ashamed about with you being 40? Because you need to get on that. Because let me tell you, you're not gaining more years. And no. you ain't going to be able to trick nobody, oh, especially this new generation of bras. You ain't going to be able to trick nobody and say it younger. I mean, and the younger women are starting to try to be more mature. And they look so old. These prom they pictures. Do look, they girl, do look pretty. That they got to calm down. They got to pull it back a bit. I seen one of them had a fucking horse. A horse? Yeah. <laughs> she rode a horse to prom. <laughs> her on the fucking date. And they Poor had a rented. They was riding that damn horse on. I, I don't know what the fuck they was doing. But all I thought to myself is, I, these better be a future doctor and lawyer. <laughs> with all this money that you spent over That's here. That's true. I feel I that. would be so irritated if my husband was like, yeah, you know, our daughter, she uh, she bought that $25,000 dress. I'll probably bop him in the head with a fucking iPad. That would be ridiculous. These people, y'all going too crazy on some kids prom. Why? Because yeah. you didn't get to live this way? Because you oh, didn't get to yeah, do all yeah, of this? Yeah. That's inappropriate. That's that so inappropriate. Now you growing these kids up quick, fast, thinking that they this is how they're supposed to celebrate shit. Uh-huh. Well, who's money? Yeah, exactly. On who's dying? Exactly. Ain't got no work ethic. The parents, they just spending money like crazy. Please. But I say all that to say, kids are growing up way too fast. They're aging really, really, really quick with how they do their makeup and their bodies and stuff like that. And Amanda Seals, 
she got to always keep our makeup and her hair done. Because sometimes she'd be getting on Instagram and she'd just be looking like she was like, like she woke up out of the <laughs> like, uh, in the morning. Like a little wild Thornberry kid. <laughs> He'd be doing all that noise, Darwin. Yeah, that's his name. <laughs> he didn't talk no words. He would just be like, oh, wow. <laughs> his hair would always be like, yeah. It's like, no, you can't have the banana. <laughs> if you like, what? yeah. Um, so, yeah, I feel sorry for her, and I, I really do feel sympathy for her. I really do feel sorry for her because she definitely seems like an empty vessel that's letting anything move within and without her yeah and that's not good you can't just leave your body open for any spirit that you perceive to be good to run through you mm -hmm. because what they're going to do is take everything that you have as a mortal yeah and use it all and then once they leave they've taken all your energy mm -hmm. with them you know and she's unfortunately in this type of cycle where she's letting things read her future she even i mean she kind of said something about spirituality and like trusting people who have a closer relationship to the spirit world yeah i ain't trusting no motherfucker they got a close relationship i am to a certain degree but if you're just out here like yeah i have a real close relationship to the spiritual world mm -hmm. i'm gonna be like nigga <laughs> i just read in thessalonians this morning it was talking about how you should test the spirits um even if you've been in like a uh, church a long time or whatever for a long time you should still test them or whoever is talking to you your leader or your sermons that you're reading or listening to and make sure that they're still being delivered to you properly because there's so much craziness in this world now i do want to wrap it up with saying in this hot though, climate because we've been on for about almost an hour I do want to wrap it up with saying she has the ability and the power to change her whole career and be like, oh, y'all don't like me. Anyway, so on our website, we are going to be dropping Black and Fabulous on Tuesdays, Black and Excellent on Wednesdays. I'm going to be doing a community pop up on Thursday in L.A. Really cool. Then yeah. uh, guess what? Who, what? who said, oh, Hollywood Unlocked? So I'm going to be around the corner from them doing a pop up shop. You can really play on this. And she's so intelligent. She, you, and I think that's irritating too. You so smart to be so fucking dumb. Yeah. To be acting so stupid, to be mm -hmm. acting so, I don't know why everybody like, doesn't like me. Da, 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 da. Okay. Maybe you, may, you might not never find out, but guess what? That ain't none of your concern. Yeah. You got all of this other opportunity that you could be focused on. And you sitting up here lying to us about a disease and then spending 10, 15 minutes on live telling us about some other shit, girl, you could be spending that 15 minutes telling us about a new merch that you came out with for um, young girls and you're going to be given half of the proceeds to spell me because you fuck with HBCUs. But you ain't doing none of that. You want to sit up here and just wallow and cry in your fucking bullshit. Yeah. You too smart for that. And where's your mama so I can beat her up? Because <laughs> why ain't your mama pull? Could you imagine if this was Luna? <laughs> no, if that was Luna, I'd be like, hey, child. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I would go up to the school and be like, okay, and Luna. Girl, okay, say What is happening? Yeah. Okay, not just because you're a child and this is an adult. I do think that there should be some type of res authoritative yeah, respect. Yeah, me too. But when you become an adult and a child is in this type of interaction with you, I want you to have respect. Yeah. And I want them to have respect for you too. Mm -hmm. I, you reap what you sow, baby. Yeah. You reap what you sow. Yeah. And what's going on in your up here? Uh, it, it, for you to feel like you can say that with the teacher, why? Yeah. What's going on? What's going yeah. on with you? Her mom is just like, what, what did you say? What did she say? Okay. My daughter is right. A lady, I'm liable to slap you in your head. Cause how are you just automatically taking her side and not even asking the question of, okay, what's all going on here? Cause you know, kids gonna lie. Yeah. They, they're not going to tell the full truth, especially if it's going to get them in trouble. Amanda was a lying ass kid. Who became a lioness adult and her mother never taught her how to have accountability. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Leave your comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking and share this video with a friend because you never know who needs a laugh indeed. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.